You know, Doc, I just, I can't help but feel like just spring guns, gas rams, they're just irrelevant. They're just losing it. I just, I need a different perspective. I'm, I'm just, I'm just so negative on this topic. I need to talk to Tom. Tom can help. Yeah. Let's go to Texas. Let's do this. By the way, Doc, can you get me some neck support? Because this couch is awful. I don't think spring guns are, uh, and, and you say gas rams, I'm just going to lump them all together because sure. they all are pushing a piston to compress air. Right. Uh, I don't think we're done. And I'll tell you why I say that. A couple of years ago, I think it was 28, 2017 maybe, the, uh, uh, Sig Air came out with the ASP-20. And I would have said you couldn't do it. It was a gun that cocked at like 35 foot-pounds mm -hmm. and yet produced 20 foot-pounds in 177 mm -hmm. and 23 and 22 caliber. Mm -hmm. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Nice trigger. They came out with their own, they call it the match light, trigger. So there was some innovation in that. I don't think we're done. I think we can do better. Well, we could definitely do better because the gun's no longer available. I know that. So, and look, there that's a whole other ball of wax. That is a whole other, yeah. But, but. I just personally, I struggle with this because you have, and I understand this is not the only cost involved with buying a PCP, but you have 200 to $300 PCPs, a little bit higher than that too. So let's go 200 to $400, okay. all right? That blow the doors off of what a spring or gas ram can do at further distances. Like a lot of these guns, 50 yards is pretty doable, like very easy. And you get multi-shot, you got a lot more power on tap. Uh, some of the guns like the Avenger are adjustable, you know, you got regulated guns, Gauntlet Avenger, you know, there's a ton of stuff out there that, sure, you're gonna spend more money up front because you have to get some way to fill it, but how does that performance not render what a Springer gas ram gun does obsolete? I can't argue with anything you say. But you're going however, to anyway. <laughs> however, comma, you didn't say at all. I'm going to turn that around. Because the spring gun is going to teach the person how to shoot. And when they know how to shoot, Tyler, they're going to be a good shot. Yeah. And that's going to reflect in everything they do in the shooting sports. No, that's a good reason to keep the Springers. Number two, there's so many more of them. Because why? Because that's what people think air guns are in the beginning. Until they come in and they see the guns you just talked about, sure. which I got no problem with. I love those guns. And they're so easy to shoot, yeah. as you said. But you know what? And I know this is an expensive one, a TX200 Mark III. Oh my gosh. One of my favorites. That's a nice gun to yep. shoot too. And it's got a great trigger and it's reasonably quiet and it moves a little bit, but if you, if you put some of those Vortec kits in it, it doesn't even move that much. Sure. Um, I'll still say it, I'll say it tops out at 50 yards. Not true because guys are shooting them 75 yards sure. and I'm sure somebody's shooting them 100. I, I'm not. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's much easier to do it with a pre-charge than sure. it is with those. Sure. But there are some guys who want that. Uh, Tyler, there's guys who want open sights on all air guns. Sure. You know, they just don't want to shoot look through glass. Yeah, so. I, I just struggle with it. And, and look, the multi-shot Springer, you know, gas ram, right, when it came back out, and for those of you that don't know, you know, they're, what, 10, 15 years prior to, what, 2017, 2018, when yeah. Gamo first introduced the new Swarms line yeah. and, you know, and kind of started the multi-shot craze again, you know, they were available. They were you had, available. They were horrible. They didn't feed very well. Yeah, that was usually the issue. And could, yeah. you dry fire them and then you break it and yeah, all that jazz. And things have come quite a ways since oh, then. Yeah. Uh, and it's very cool to see all the different options that have come to the market over the last couple of years in that realm. But I look at it and I go, 
All right, so this was cool for a couple of years. I don't know if it's cool still. I mean, they're still selling. I'm not you know, saying they're not cool. And I'm not saying you shouldn't buy one if that's what your budget deems the thing to do you know, and is most practical for you. Um, but I look at companies like Air Arms, like Y-Rock in Germany, they've changed nothing in spring guns in a decade or so, yep. other than stock design for the most part. And, and, you're, and these are the still, right now, the top tier in the spring and gas ram world. So why aren't they changing? Boy, oh boy, I'm thinking of a whole bunch of punchlines to what you just said. For example, why aren't the Chinese coming out with guns that are equivalent to the guns that you just mentioned? Yeah, wampum, dollars. Uh, turns out the Chinese have to compete just like everybody else, and it's not easy when you live halfway around the world. Not anymore, anyway, with uh, yeah. shipping costs through right. the roof. And, yeah. So, will they get any better? Well, I, I mentioned the ASP-20, mm -hmm. which was a better gas ram gun. Sure. But, and for a brake barrel too, let's, let's qualify that because your TX200 is an under level. Yep. It has a fixed barrel. Many people think that makes it more accurate. I think it makes it easier to shoot accurately. I don't think it necessarily makes it more accurate. I think the added weight helps a lot more than people give it credit well, for. Well, the that. added weight, yeah, now that thing weighs 10 pounds. <laughs> Ain't no argument about that or 9.7 or yeah, whatever, sure. but it's close. Yep. Yeah, and, and the ASP was, ugh, it was down around under, under eight, I think it was under seven, I think to be so. honest with yeah. you. What could be done? Here's what I think. All right, dad, kid. Dad wants a gun, kid wants a gun. If they could make a Springer brake barrel mm -hmm. that cocked this far and produced six foot pounds of energy, hmm. But you push it down this far, and it produces 13 foot-pounds of energy. Kind of like a Beeman P1, only they're opening it up like this, and we're breaking the barrel down like this. Mm. Now there's a gun that dad and kid could shoot. So you make the stock a sort of a compromise size-wise between dad and kid. There's something that could be done. Mm. You make it super smooth. Well, how do you do that without having it hand-tuned? Well, I don't know, but I do know that the ASP-20 did it with a gas spring. Well, you do have, it's a very small number example, but you have the, uh, what was it, the, the Theobin Dual Magnum. There were like only 120 made, but this was a, if I recall correctly, an underlever tap loader yeah. that you could cock twice. Yep. And the second stroke was like 65 pounds wow. to cock it, yeah. but it was also a near near 30 foot pound 22. How about that? Yeah, well, they only made 120 of them. So, uh, but there have been things that have been done in the past that you could probably bring back to light. I don't know how, would they be competitive in that price market? That, no, that's the problem. Yeah. Nobody's gonna spend a thousand bucks for something like this. Yes. Dad and kid, they want to spend under 300. Dad thinks he wants to spend 100, but after he gets back from the box store, he realizes you can't do that. Right. So then he goes online, he goes to Pyramid Air, and he says, ah, well, if there was a gun that was, let's say, $299 that did that, it doesn't have to be world-class accurate, but it should be accurate. It doesn't have to have a world-class trigger, but it ought to be a decent trigger. I'm not saying you start out with a clean sheet of paper, but probably you need to come pretty close to that. And you design a gun that dad and kid can shoot together that's a Springer. That would be a reason. Now, you can shut me up by saying you could do all of that with a PCP today. You could. Which is possible. Yeah, but uh, but again, it goes back to there's a all the other stuff. auxiliary costs yeah. involved, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I will say that, that one thing I thought was going to be I kind of want to say the next wave 
was the 34 EMS from Diana, which was kind of the first, at least first that I'm aware of, modular spring gun. Right. Um, which really, it's it's both. You you were supposed to be able to change the power plants. You could change the caliber by changing the barrel assembly. You were supposed to be able to shim the barrel. Now, I'm not saying you can't do those things for folks buying the 34 EMS, but I haven't seen any of those parts available. So right. I, I'm sure they're going to come to market at some point, but just, you know, that is a cool concept, if nothing else, that does give some life back right. into, you know, those those platforms. You know, one thing that outside of that, you know, we, we talk a lot about gas rams versus springs and things like that, but one thing that gets overlooked is recoilless guns. And I think there's something to be said maybe there where you're talking about, okay, how do I make something self-contained that I don't have to pump multiple times, right. so a multi-pump pneumatic, right? Where is a, a good springer gas ram option that doesn't give me the negative shooting experience that I get with a typical Springer gas ram. Wow, okay. And I don't wanna say it's a negative shooting experience, I shouldn't say that, but you understand the what I'm challenge. saying, the difficulty. The yes, challenge. yes. Yeah. Um, because you have the Diana 54 and 56, but they're yeah. notoriously hard on scopes and they're also seven, $800. That's right, yeah. You know, they're hurt. I can't think of anything since that I can't either. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say I know of one that uh, is, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard that there's going to be a new entry into this area here soon, which uh, from what I've been told is a different mechanism. It's not a sliding action, um, but I don't know if it's gonna be worth a damn, you know, like, so I'm sure, I think that's where people are going, is how do I make something that is a self-contained power plant easier for the consumer to use? Wow. And I think that's where this all goes. Okay. Personally. I think if, if you can't figure that out, I think they're done. That's me. All right, very good. No, nothing? I got nothing. Wow. Yeah, you know, it was a good trip. It was good to get Tom's perspective. I still think gas rams and spring guns are dead, I guess. I mean, but <sighs> maybe there's hope. I don't know. Maybe not. Does it really matter? I don't know, I just hope people like the video, and if they do, maybe they, maybe they hit that thumbs up button. You know, it'd be great if they subscribe too. We could use some more of those, I guess. Keeps the sensors from destroying our channel. <sighs> maybe they'll comment too, so I can actually like have something to do at work this week. I don't know, man, it's kind of crazy. You don't tell Val this stuff, do you?